Hi, Annika Lidne here with the Swedish Startup Sessions and this week we will meet Anna Oskarsson with a really interesting digital receipt startup Kvitta. This is Sweden, you ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the is the Swedish startup sessions hi welcome back I'm here with Anna Oskarsson from Kvittar. Um, we've known each other for quite some time. Actually, the first time I saw you uh, were during the Pirate Bay trial when you did the, the English <laughs> daily summary uh, on, on that video. You became quite a celebrity during that time. <laughs> well, yeah, at least among, among all the... Or among a lot of hackers and, and yeah. uh, what you see, what kind of clients or people fighting for for the internet, yeah. and the speech of the internet. Yes. How how came you? What why did you do that? Um, well, it was actually I, th I think it was uh, Mons Adler from from Bambooser and yeah. Peter from 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 the Pirate Bay at that time talking about it, and they were like, well. Everything is going to be going on in Swedish, but we have all the people from from the entire world who are really interested in interested in this, and it's a very, very important question yeah. for how we're going to look at file sharing and so on in, in the future. And therefore, uh, they said, "Well, don't you want to do this? Mm. It would be really fun to see what we can do." And I was like. Okay, yeah, I can just try it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I did, and it turned out to be a very, very, very important for people not living in Sweden yeah. to hear it and to get all these updates. Yeah. So yeah. So what what's your your background other than trial reporter? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually have um, I can say I have two two different backgrounds. I've been working with the Economy and accountant since uh, since I was in college more yeah, or less. Yeah. So I have uh, quite some interest in, in working with numbers. Yeah. And after that, I've been studying at the, a school called the Chaos Pilots, yeah. where you work with business in a creative way and other types of projects and so on in a creative way. And that's a Danish school, right? Yeah, it's it's a Danish school from the beginning, yeah. but I I went here in here in Malmo. Okay, actually. And when, uh, there's been a, quite a lot of talk about the case pilot. So, so what's unique about that their their approach? I think what's unique is that you work with real, like real projects yeah. uh, during maybe a third of the time, mm -hmm. and then a third of the time you have lectures or people coming from all around the world mm -hmm. inspiring you. And then you also have time to work with yourself and mm -hmm. to work and reflect over the things that you do and the things that you work with. Mm. So you get a really, really deep knowledge about yourself and about other people, mm. uh, which I think is... And is there's really good. quite a lot of people actually from the Chaos Pilots in the Swedish startup world. We have you, we have Mons Sadler, who's founder of uh, Bambuse. We have, have uh, Heidi Harman, who is CEO of the British parts of uh, Scribe. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if quite quite a few yeah. people from from the same education. Um, so what's what's Twitter? Twitter? What's your your startup? Um, well, it's it's more or less a system for handling receipts, digital. Mm -hmm. So we started with a vision to, well, everything is digital today. Uh, I mean, we do the tax declaration yeah. digital. We do our accounting digital. Uh, but why don't we get these receipts digital? We still print them on paper. Yeah. It's an unsustainable and normally they only last for maybe half a year. Yeah. 
and then you can see what's on them. Yeah. So we said, well, since they are digital in the system from the beginning, we should be able to to send them from the store directly mm -hmm. to the consumer. Yeah. And that's where it all started. But because we were really, really frustrating, yeah. frustrated about it. Yeah. And you think that your background with with economy accounting sort of gave you the passion to to work with it. Um, yes, of course, partly mm -hmm. because I see a lot of a lot of problems or a lot of things that you do when you deal with, when you're in a company mm -hmm. or if you work with a project, uh, and that is handling receipts and so on, which is really really time consuming mm -hmm. and therefore very very cost. Mm. It costs a lot yeah. for the business. Um, so, so uh, I mean, it, it's a quite a new thought of doing it that way. Um, so, how? But, but I mean, the whole economy space. As soon as you go into accounting and banks and systems and all, all I've been working with similar fields. I mean, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, yeah you have fun, does that you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what all. Oh, people say when they start with a startup, well, yeah. you you need to at least three double the times. Yeah. But I mean, come on, that doesn't work. When you're trying to connect, as we do, trying to get the digital world work with the physical world. Yeah. And with all types of systems. Yeah. You have to to like five double the time. Yeah. Because otherwise, you you can't make it. Mm. And how have have, have the, the market reacted to to the idea? Uh, I think we started in 2009 talking yeah. about it and and contacting different types of, of systems and more or less two years later people were up to meeting me, up to, to, to start talking about it uh -huh. and to actually look at it. Mm. So there has been a really, really long time mm. for, for getting, how do you say? To be to be motivated to even yeah, look into yeah. it. Uh, I've I've heard that I mean in the U.S. you have like Mint.com where you can gather all all your uh, uh, bank info from different banks and so on. And we don't have anything similar as far as I know in Europe. And 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 I had a student who wanted to do a project like that and and uh, try started to contact the banks and it was just like no. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> And, and do you find that that some uh, some collaborators are or some partners are easier to work with than than others? Um, well, looking into this this type of field, uh, definitely, I would mm -hmm. say. I mean, to if it would be the perfect the perfect service, I would like to see all my receipts in my back mm -hmm. in my internet bank, yeah. and. That's where that's where I hope we're going to get. Yeah. But to look, if we're going to work from that perspective, yeah. we wouldn't be able to make it now. Then yeah. it will take maybe five more years. Yeah. So there are there are really slow movers, mm -hmm. um, some more than others. Um, and I think when you come from a more digital or working with yeah. digital service, you get really tr frustrated because they have another type of mind mindset. Yeah, yeah. And is 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 their problem? Is it uh, that they don't want to let in potential competitors, or is it technical reasons, or security reasons, or that they simply don't care? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there are a lot of uh, aspects. If you look in. The US, for example, yeah. uh, compare that with the Swedish bank market. There are security is very, very. That's one of the most prioritized things here in yeah. Sweden. Uh, looking into the banks, if you look at Mint, for example, yeah. and what they do in in US is that they put more or less the service first and the security after. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they have another type of card or pay or payment system, mm. uh, another type of bank system, mm. and so on, and that's that makes it easier for them to yeah. open up to new new services. Yeah. We don't have that in Sweden, and normally all the systems are based on on old programs, mm. Mm. and they're not they're, they they haven't changed it yet. And it sounds like you need a huge team to, to work with this. <laughs> How many are you working with the Kvitta? Uh, we are eight 
at the moment. Um, uh, seven co-owners and actually we employed one uh, a little while ago. I was uh -huh. working to the business to business part. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And uh, do you have any main competitors or are you so, still so early stage that that this market are, are quite unexplored or unexploited? Mm, I would say if we look into the to the Nordic, uh, we have two two competitors. We have one that is called e Kvitteringer. Mm -hmm. uh, they are they are they have been on the market for a while, but mm -hmm. they haven't really expanded. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but that's one of them. And then maybe because it's a Danish market. Mm -hmm. The another one is um, something that is called Sparakvittut, uh, which is coming up in Sweden as well. Yeah. Uh, with quite a different approach, but I think yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so are you, are you, uh, at what stage are you now, are you able, to, will you be able to, to release, uh, you know, the fur soon or, or uh, how, on what stage are you? Um, what we did is that we actually, we were first out in Sweden, mm -hmm. launching it in June this year, um, in that, in that sentence, making it possible for people to buy stuff and pay and get the receipts digital mm. from the store mm. to the to the net. Um, and that we have made with one one point of sale system. Yeah. So what we're looking into now is that we're integrating with the, a couple more ones that we have um, agreements mm. with at this moment. And I think they're going to come up in the beginning of in the beginning of 2012. Mm -hmm. Because in the middle of the the winter and the Christmas, you don't do anything no. with, the, with the system. That's yeah. that's yeah. how it is. Yeah. I can <laughs> <So>. imagine. <laughs> but it is, how is the market with point of sale system? Is that is that a few big ones? So it's quite easy for you to to uh, you know get mm. a big market share from a consumer point of view that I can gather. Or is it a lot of small ones, which means a lot of more work for you? Um, I mean, I would say we have around 70 mm. systems in Sweden, mm. whereas 10 of them are, are the bigger ones, mm. uh, covering 73% of the mar market. Yeah, that, so. that sounds manageable yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah. And and how have you uh, founded Kvita? Is it bootstrapped or do you have some rich investors? Yeah. So? <laughs> totally bootstrapped. Yeah. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of time and, and effort from... from uh, from the 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 share, yeah, the share owners, uh, but we also got a small a small prize from Vinova, yeah. the innovation center yeah. here in Sweden, last year, mm. Mm, which had helped us uh, with some some part of some part of it, doing some research and and digging into the market a little mm. bit deeper and developing some some uh, an app for example mm. and so on. I think it's impressive to get eight people b to bootstrap and, and spend a lot of time of their free time uh, because I imagine you have to pay the rent as well so you have to do other stuff to to, <laughs> yeah. to, to get money. Uh, how, how have you, you, because I think that that's one of the hardest things when, when starting a startup that you might be, you know, two co-founders co but getting the next couple of founders who fit in the team and convincing them that this is a great idea which they could should come on board and, and you know eat noodles for <laughs> the next three years or whatever. So so how how have you managed that process? Mm, I think I mean we have met people through different types of, um, of for example Sweden social webcam mm. um, different types of other events. We did, I've, I went to school with one of the guys um, and the next two got on board. Uh, we were working doing 24 hour business camp together mm. uh, and I found them really, really cool mm. and I liked them a lot so, so I yeah. asked them to if they wanted to get on board. And 
then through them we found the next three guys. Okay. So, so that's how we've been working. The, the so-called avalanche strategy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that also makes it really... Because then the people know what they're going into mm -hmm. and they want to join because they they think it's a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, and that motivates us all, I think. And are, are you... you uh, do you have the same amount of shares or you have a different amount of share depending on how much time you spend or how, mm -hmm. how you know how early you got into the process or how have you have you managed that part we have actually managed it so that depending on when you get into yeah. to the to the business or to the company mm -hmm. uh you get different shares mm -hmm. uh because that's what we thought was the best yeah. thing to do and we don't want to combine it with how much you work mm -hmm because we are in a different types of, of um, moments in our life, yeah. everyone. So yeah. sometimes someone can work a little bit more and mm. then the next, next half year someone can work a little bit more. Yeah, so. yeah. So, so what are you, you, are you going to, to um, do you have a goal to raise capital uh, or do you want to stay bootstrapped? Mm, well, we have a goal to raise capital. Mm. Uh, since we launched um, and the reason for that is to be able to to actually get get things done and get something really really big happening happen is to actually take some money in. yeah otherwise I mean we have been working like this for for two years mm. already so and to keep the people motivated and for them not to choose anything else yeah it's it's important to at some time, at some some level, actually get an mm. injection. And also not to lose momentum in the marketplace, I can guess. Yes. Yeah. Because that, that I would say that's the most scary thing when you, when you're in that situation that you actually launched. Yeah. Then you get even more nervous because yeah. now you really need to deliver. Yeah. And deliver more yeah. and more and more. Yeah. And that I think are something that we need to do get better at yeah. and then we need some capital for that. Uh, so investors, talk to Anna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your, your um, more long term go goals? Are you thinking of uh, staying in Sweden or expanding to the Nordic region or Europe? Uh, mm, I think first of all we, we're looking at the, the Nordic yeah. region definitely uh, because it's a quite quite similar market. Yeah. Um, then we have another thing that we did is that we built a system so you can more or less white label it. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why we did that is because we think we are looking for the infrastructure of it. Mm. We want to make the infrastructure available in different countries mm. and we want to make it work mm. and therefore we said well let's build it this way because then people can actually buy it or use it and we can get get the function up yeah. there so i think in that term it will spread more mm. in the term of Twitter. yeah yeah that's very interesting too too and, and i mean if you look at the bit really big startups today like facebook and twitter it's infrastructure it's yeah. not the apps really or the usage that much no uh, very interesting uh, what what do you consider the the most important lesson that you have learned during these past two years as an entrepreneur um my first first very or my first lesson was that okay i was working alone for almost a year mm. and that's that tires you out yeah you get tired and you get tired of hearing hearing yourself and not getting answers or in inspiration from yeah. other people so I think that's my first lesson get other people on board yeah because that helps you, you yourself grow and the, the business grow yeah so and also find the right people mm. that's really important mm. I mean it doesn't matter what you what you're going to do, but if everyone believes in it, and if if you, if you actually get along, mm. you're going to get make mm. it work. Mm. And it sounds also like like the different social gatherings have been very important for you, like Swedish Social Web Camp and Twenty Four Hour Business Camp. Yeah, um, 
in funding, co-founders. Yeah. yeah, I would say. I mean, I, I think it's it's really important because you can see the people uh, before you choose to work mm -hmm. with them in a different environment, uh, and also try to work with them a little bit because mm -hmm. then you know what what you can expect expect from yeah. each other and how you work and mm -hmm. if it will actually I mean m the people that I'm going to work with after working with them for 24 mm -hmm. hours they know my worst side yeah. <laughs> <more or less. laughs> yeah. so then they know if they still like me yeah. <laughs> and that I would say is definitely a, an advantage yeah yeah and uh, what do you think that a, a big companies or corporations can learn from you from the experience you had so far mm. I mean, and I guess this is what all startups say, yeah, well, open up. Yeah. But um, I do think that they will learn or could learn that there are actually parts of their business that they can get from other example. For example, I mean, we can, we can deliver receipts digital to mm. their loyalty program. Mm. They don't need to develop them themselves. Yeah. So they can bring just functions from the outside from mm. startups mm. and actually take the advantage to do that because yeah. that would be much cheaper for them and faster uh, and faster mm. and it would probably be more be more uh, digital or internet yeah. friendly than yeah. their own systems yeah. so yeah um, before you I mean you said that you were working alone for almost a year with Quitta did you sort of do an internal pivot around different ideas before you found the idea for Quitta or was it that sort of self-evident when you started out? Well, the, the, the Quitta as, as a vision was, was pretty clear, mm. uh, but the way how to work it around and how to actually get it yeah. to work and for example, okay, can we use can we use the credit card or what do we use to identify the users yeah. and where should we build and where should we start and, and so on. Um, all That was all the things that I did the first year and also counting and okay, mm. how much time are we saving and mm. who are ready to buy, who are ready to pay for this mm. and so on. Mm. Um, so, do you have any... any um what what do you think about starting a sweet startup in Sweden compared to perhaps somewhere else? Did you did you think of you know we have a lot of Swedish companies or young Swedish startups who go to Berlin or go to London or or even move to to the U.S. Did you have any ideas to do that or was it like no I'm starting here at home? Mm, I mean with with the system of ours. Uh, I'm very glad I started yeah. here because it's really complex because we have to deal with so many different parts. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the tax attorney, um, insurance company, and all different mm -hmm. types of laws. So I'm really glad I stayed here. I, I mean, I like traveling, so yeah. I would rather be somewhere else yeah. to be honest. But but I still like it. It's very. Um, it's quite friendly and you get a, a lot of help and a lot of inspiration mm. from, from other people yeah. here. And how do you feel that the start of climate is in Sweden? Mm, I mean, I think it... I was, I was in uh, Norway the other weekend. Yeah. Um, and compared it to... I mean, that's just a couple of, couple of hours away. Yeah. But still, gosh, we rock here in Sweden. Yeah. It's so cool. I never thought that thought about it, I mean, that we are that many people and that many people that are actually trying, mm. especially I think if you compare to the Swedish Jante law culture, yeah. it's it's really amazing mm. how how the, the market is going here. So perhaps we should be very happy for the lack of oil. Yeah, <laughs> I think so, definitely think so. <laughs> So, do you have any final, uh, final famous words? <laughs> final famous words. Um, mm, no, but <laughs> there is a there is a quote saying, "It's funny that they invented the time the timekeeper, not the time giver." Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, this is all from Malmö and uh, Anna Oskarsson with Kvittar.